we've got something really special for you right now. Yes, because here on Breakfast, we have been following the journey of Huey and Freddie, the two best friends who've raised hundreds of thousands of pounds for the Royal Manchester Children's Hospital, where Huey was having treatment for leukaemia. Was. Yes, was. That's such an important word to Huey, isn't it? Was, because Huey has been given the all clear. Uh, he was given it in November, and today is a very... Big milestone for him and his best mate. And Nina is at the hospital now with the boys. Good morning, Nina. Yes, a very good morning to you. It's been a massive milestone knowing that that journey is over with the treatment. But today is even bigger. We will ring that bell to mark the occasion, the end of his treatment and his next steps forward. But before we do that, I want you to have a look at these bits. First of all, half of Burnley's here. Nice hey. to see you, gang, <laughs> to share the occasion. Look at these beads. You might be wondering why his friends and family are holding them. Every single bead here represents a different challenge that Huey's had to overcome. So a white one representing some chemotherapy, a black one representing a blood test, a thumbprick, for example, different colors representing overnight stays, times he's had to have for operations. And here we are at the end of the beads. Did you think this day would ever come? We've been waiting for it for a long time, and it's uh, yeah, I'm so glad it's here. And yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a brilliant day. And you look back along the length of that, and all the people holding it, and think, my goodness, what we've been through. Yeah, I mean, we've been through so much. I mean, this is this represents three and a half years of treatment, um, and yeah, it's just it's. It's nice to look back on and think what I've what I've been through. Um, yeah, of treatment, but also of love and yeah. support and help, not least from your best pal Freddie, who got involved three and a half years yeah. ago when you did that first run because Huey couldn't do it. Did you think it would snowball into this? No, I didn't even think we'd reach the one thousand pound target, but to come this far was just amazing. And where have you got to in terms of fundraising for this incredible place? Well, we're, well, we're yeah. up to 350,000 and you can still donate. Um, search Huey and Freddie and then it comes up with the Such a pro. Uh, fundraising link. But yeah, it's just, uh, it's, we want to do so much more for the hospital, more than we've already done. And uh, yeah, it's been really special to, uh, to share the past few years with everyone from the hospital. And special is a word that keeps coming up. We will be ringing that bell in a few minutes time. But I want to say this is a really unusual place. It is a place where parents face their very darkest hours. But the families that we speak to also say this is a place of comfort. It's a place of hope. And incredibly, it's also a place of great joy. We've been speaking with some of those families. Spend any time at all on Ward 86 and you'll notice a sound you might not expect. Laughter. <laughs> Cheeky, <laughs> Families here are facing the toughest of times, but thanks to the community staff have created, they're not doing it alone. It's a nice place to be, funnily enough. It is, as strange as it sounds. It's amazing, yeah. like a second home. It is heartbreaking at times, of course it is. But speaking to people on the ward and friends, that's our therapy. Hello. <laughs> is it Donna and Ella? Ella is 14 and is being treated for leukaemia. Just all been a bit of a whirlwind because it's the first diagnosis. It was just before Christmas as well, so mm. that was really hard. Um, but no, everyone's been great and helped Ella make friends as well. What kind of things are you missing at the moment, Ella, that you'll, you'll be able to enjoy when you get back home? As weird as it sounds, school. You miss school? Yeah. This is breaking news. 14-year-old <laughs> misses school. <laughs> what is it that you miss about school? Has your mum paid you to say that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think it's just my friends mainly. Friends. But I have had some, most of my friends come and see me. And someone else that I think you're probably very grateful for. Mom. Yeah, I am very grateful <laughs> yeah. for her. Yeah. She stayed with me when I needed her. Oh. <laughs> you 
must have double tapped it, Joe, because you basically called the whole ward. With 32 beds, the ward is constantly busy with patients. They're the strongest, most resilient children you'll ever meet. They'll, they've thrown so much in terms of treatment, yet, hold on. Um, busy, always busy. <laughs> yes, <yeah>, sorry. <laughs> um, they've thrown so much uh, in terms of treatment, yet they've still got a smile on their face, they're still happy, they're still getting on with it, they'll have a laugh, they'll have a joke, and that's what carries us through. Even on the hard days, staff like David help the children smile. Well, it's in my name, I'm a magic maker, so I've got to make magic. That's what I do, make magic and fun, do games, puzzles, challenges. Can you talk chicken? Can you talk chicken? I can talk chicken. Can you talk chicken? Have you got the happiest job in a hospital? I, it was once described as the best job in the world. <laughs> I think it is. Don't tell everybody. <laughs> Seven-year-old Efi is being treated for Ewing sarcoma, a rare type of bone cancer. Who's this then, Efi? Oh, yes. mm. What's her name? Grey. Makes me feel happy. Pleasure. Always a pleasure. Always very polite. Always very kind. You are. You're a pleasure to look after. You're not normally this quiet, are you? Mm. I'm shy now. Is it, the, is it the camera and the microphone putting you off a, a little bit? A bit. Uh, just a little bit. <laughs> All I remember her saying is, unfortunately, I'm sorry, is cancer. After that, I know she told me a load of information and I honestly couldn't tell you what it was. We asked about her hair and I think that was, in the whole process, probably the most difficult part of when you're washing your six-year-old's hair and it's coming out in your hands. And I think she found that really difficult, um, but she, she doesn't ever moan about it. So now I think we look at life a lot differently as well. Like. You, sometimes you just got to think, do you know what, there's a lot worse going on. So yeah. for the time being, yeah. well, it is being made, it's just extensions clipped onto oh. the hair piece. Alessia is 15 and is also dealing with the side effects of treatment. I have sage for Hodgkin's lymphoma. Just started yesterday my second cycle of treatment out of six. She's hoping to get better in time for her high school prom. Well, you definitely notice yourself becoming more tired, a lot of energy changing, like your mood. You can't really get up out of bed sometimes. I might be very, like, a narky teenager, having a go at him all the time, but... Is that true, Dad? Is she a narky teenager? <laughs> well, <laughs> she's got a golden ticket. She's got a year <laughs> where she can do whatever she wants and do no wrong. And you've said that on the telly now, That's so there's it. no taking that. Guilty as charged. No Holiday to the Maldives. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't speak high enough for the staff here that they're absolutely brilliant, aren't they, Alessia? Yeah, definitely. They've done the most and more. I just think I want to get through that and I want to be able to say, like, I did my GCSEs with this and, like, I've made it to my prom, which I've waited for since I started school. Yeah, and that was when I had her. <laughs> <laughs> Smiles, laughter, sometimes tears. Ward 86 sees it all. But thanks to the staff, the volunteers and the patients, nobody is doing it alone. Josh Parry, BBC News, Manchester. Oh, and thank you to Eva and Alessia and all of the young people who spoke to Josh and their families at what must be a very challenging time. And yet within that, as you were hearing, there is comfort and joy. And thanks in large part to staff like you, Andrea, a cancer nurse here. Are you warm enough, first of all? Because you said to me, I should have brought yes. my big coat. <laughs> yes, I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> How do you walk that line? Because it is a dark time for lots of families. And yet all the families we speak to said, you know what, we love it here. So I think that it's important that we have somebody who shines a torch in front of them to tell them what's coming so that they're as prepared as they can be. So our job is to give them the courage and the confidence and control over what is a very uncontrollable situation that they find themselves in. Um, so, yeah, and to be with them. So we go through all the side effects of treatment, what to expect. and 
unfortunately there is suffering with cancer there yeah. is you can't get away from that but we try to make it the best we can and there's a lot of smiling a yeah. lot of smiling and a lot of laughing goes on and butterfly kisses <laughs> and giving them something solid to stand on at a time yeah, where they may feel like the floor's disappearing from yeah. beneath them we're ringing the bell today for the end of Huey's cancer treatment there are families who will be watching this and will be saying you know what there may not be an end to our treatment or the outcome won't be as positive as Huey's but that bell is available to everyone isn't it at different stages it is yes yeah so each family can um, ring the bell when it's right for them mm. um, and we um, and we make that happen yes yeah. and you do a wonderful job everyone we've spoken to has said they're enormously grateful for the work that you and your colleagues do so thank you um, Huey what would you like to say to the gang at the Children's Hospital? Um, just thank you to everyone who has supported me along my journey. And it's, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a long journey, but more highs than lows, I think. And they've become your second family, haven't they? Yeah. Particularly during lockdown when you had mm -hmm. to isolate. You spent five weeks in here? Yeah, yeah. It was, um, six weeks I spent in hospital. Um, five weeks in here and uh, a week in Blackburn Hospital. And it's... The support from everybody, it's just so, so nice. Um, and yeah, from the nurses and from everybody, uh, all the support staff, they're just all so great. And Freddie, you've been there by his side, literally by his side at times, but sometimes when he hasn't been able to walk, you've been there doing it for him, you've been running for it. What's it been like for you? Because it's been three years of watching your pal go through this. Uh, it was tough to see what he's had to go through, but that's why I wanted to do something, just to try and get anywhere near close, but I knew I couldn't get anything as hard as what he had to go through. And you've both done incredibly well, because sometimes being the friend of someone going through that is just as painful. So who better to hold the bell? And we will ring it shortly, but um, before we do, we thought it wouldn't be right for you not to have some special guests to mark the occasion with you. Joining us this morning, we have Burnley's absolute finest. Do you know what's coming? Stand up! Stand up! <laughs> We've got Jack Cook, Josh Brownhill and club president Stuart on. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good, thank you. Before we ring that bell, can I just ask you quickly why it was important for you guys to be here this morning? Just because of obviously of what's gone on and how incredible they've both been on this journey that's been really hard and to see what they've done, um, you know, raising so much money is like just incredible just to you know, show the support that we can do. Should we ring that bell then? Absolutely. Let's go for it. Are you ready? Before we do, there's a procedure that has to take place, and that is the reading of the poem. Andrea. Right, Huey, are you ready? Ring this bell three times well. It's told to clearly say, my treatment's done, this course is run, and I am on my way. Ring that bell. <laughs> So relieved and so happy that it's yeah all done. And, and all uh, your family around you to see it, yeah. Mom. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm. I'm good. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm glad it's um, it, it's finished, but it's sad as well. You know, we've, they've been part of our family, the hospital for for three years, and we've got a lot to thank them for. So it's um, 
it's it's a great day, but it's uh, you know it's tinged with a little bit of sadness that we won't get to see everybody as much. But it's uh, although I've got a feeling with their fundraising I think we'll back. <laughs> yeah. we'll be back here, won't we? And you yeah. said speak to Kieran, not me. So I will. <laughs> How are you feeling? Oh, that was yeah special. That's um, the moment we've been waiting for for yeah three and a half years, over a thousand days, and yeah, that's um, that is the moment. And um, we, as a family. Um, cannot thank this hospital enough for what they've done. Um, the doctors, nurses, the consultants, the support staff, everybody has played their part and they do it day in, day out for every child that comes into this hospital and that is the, um, these are the heroes here. Yeah, it's an incredible place, it really is. And Beatrice, you said something to me as his sis that you knew when he came here, he'd be all right, but that mum and dad would feel safe too. Yeah. And that's really important when you're a sibling, isn't it? Yeah, it's just, it's, it's so, like, warming to know that he's coming here and there's great people everywhere, like, down to the reception staff, like, everybody is just so welcoming. And I've only been here a few times and every time I've come in, they're like, hi, Trix, like, we've heard so much about you. And they remember every single detail about every single patient. And when you think about it, like, that is huge, like, I can't thank everybody enough. You've all been so, so amazing in this journey, and thank you. Well, let's end with a big round of applause for all the staff at the Royal Manchester Children's Hospital. I'll tell you what, should we give that bell another ring? <laughs> Here we go. Well done, mate. Fantastic. Oh, that's wonderful to see. Oh, look at that smile on his face. I oh, know. Well done, guys. What a oh, moment. Thank so you, great. everybody. Thank you, Gail, oh. Freddie, everybody, all the staff there. You are incredible. And I tell you what, if you're watching that at half past eight on a Monday morning, I hope we have given you a great start to your week because that is quite something. You all right? No. <laughs> we need a break. Let's get the news travel and weather where you are. We'll see you in a moment. That was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So gorgeous.